that's where my MO got where, you know, I was sued for over $100 million while I wrestled. But you know what? I was not sued by John Stossel. Another subject, John Stossel. I want to get on that real quick here. You know, John Stossel did not sue me, and I did not hit him in his ears, like he said. The Madison Square Garden doctor said that nothing was wrong with John Stossel. He had no damage to his ears whatsoever. Everything was good. John Stossel's brother in Boston said he had permanent ear damage the rest of his life. Never be able to hear again. Well, John Stossel here a couple of years ago on his show, he was doing one about scams and people stealing money and making false things, all this here. He said, I'm guilty of that myself because my injuries was jurosomatic. Jurosomatic means that once you get paid, you don't hurt no more. <laughs> That's exactly what he said on his show now. I was just wondering, I've watched that back a couple of times this morning. And of course, when I started my podcast several years ago, that was, that was something I always asked everybody. Man, what'd you think when Dr. D slapped John Stossel? I could appreciate it, especially back in, uh, what was that, 85 when that happened? 84, 85? Yeah, 84, 84, I believe. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, you know, I, I broke into business in 89. It was still protected even back in the day. If somebody said it was, you know, fake, I mean, no damn near fighting words. If you was a bar, it was a fight. And so I, I can kind of appreciate the mentality. And alongside with, uh, you know, being in, I guess that was Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Yes. That's kind of, you yes. know, that's the backyard. That's kind of holy ground. And so, you know, yeah. I know that he was going around doing his interviews. And so all of a sudden it gets to you. And, you know, according, you know, to, to what you said, you know, hey, Vince said, hey, man, and, you know, give this guy something or, or whatever. So do, yeah. do you think, looking back, do you think you worked yourself into a shoot? Because I, I was talking to, to Bret Hart right before. I guess there was there was something that, that had already happened before that night, that evening, that you had already, yeah. you was already a little bit hot to begin with. What happened earlier that evening? No, no, it wasn't hot. What, what it was, what it was, see, Ben's come to the dressing room. I, was, I come in the dressing room, of course, got dressed, and then Ben's come in, and he said, David, I want you to do it. go out here and do an interview. This guy's making a joke out of the business. He was 2020 News. I didn't know John Stossel. And, you know, you don't go out in Madison Square Garden and do an interview unless Vince tells you to or somebody tells you to. You know, you don't walk out there and start interviewing. So he said, I want you to go out and I want you to blast him. I want you to tear his ass up. Stay in character, Dr. D. And then everybody in the dressing room heard that. Alpha, Sika, the boys in there, they all heard Vince over there talking to him. They might not have heard exactly what he said, but they heard him talking to me. So he went out. Uh, a few minutes later, a guy comes in. The Iron Sheik was out in the hallway, along with Fuji in the hallway, leaning up against the door, door facing, one on one side and one on the other side. Neither one of these guys moved an inch during that whole thing. Now, you know and I know, Steve, if there's some shit going down in the hallway, like went down there, somebody's going to be moving and say, hey, hold up, wait a minute, hey, oh, you know. They was enjoying the show. And John Stoss will come out, and him and another guy come out, and he tried to talk to me two times or three times. I forget how many it was because so many people around there. And the one everybody's seen is where he was talking to me, and I said, what's wrong, boy? Can't you, I mean, can't you talk? I mean, you know, you know you're right. I go, I go, I go, I go yeah, right. You kind of, and Ben saw he told me he'd make a joke out of it. I didn't know nothing about Eddie Mansfield and him. I knew nothing about Hogan and him. I knew nothing. And Vince told me to blast him, tear his ass up. And then he said, ah, that's great. Well, I think you're fake. He didn't say that. He said, I think it's fake. But I thought he said, I think you're fake. So I said, oh, fake? Well, this is an open hand slap. Pow. He went down. On the jaw, not on the ear, nowhere near the ear. He got up, and I was always taught, man, get up. You need to put him back down. Because, <laughs> you know, John might have got mad and wanted to whoop my ass coming up. <laughs> I doubt it, but you know, <laughs> but I had to hit him with the left because he was just there. The left was there. He went quick enough to dodge it. And then he took off running. And he'll come Vince running down. Oh, what the hell is the matter with him? And then he comes in and he tells me, David, get ready, do your match. And Anoki, they sent it back down, you know, moved me down. I was like semi, main event or whatever, but they put it down to get the show on and uh, I come out of the match, Vince said, David, get your stuff together, get out, go to the uh, hotel downtown, I forget, Howard Johnson or whatever. And he said, everything's okay, uh, they're talking about they want to arrest you or whatever, but it's going to be okay. Well, what a lot of people don't know is, I got suspended from the New York Athletic Commission. I didn't even have a license to work in New York. 
I don't know how they can use to defend somebody for not wrestling. Three thousand dollar fine, and Vince paid that. He said. Baltimore, Maryland suspended me. L.A. suspended me. Several other states suspended me. Within a week, I was reinstated in all of them. They all reinstated me after they watched the tape and seen what happened. So Hogan didn't want me around anymore, see. Man, Hogan had this thing that he always thought he could beat me, you know, even when we were running around together and, you know, going to the gym together and everything. He always thought he could beat me. I said, you couldn't beat my wife, let alone me. And he'd get mad. He'd get mad. I'd get him in the ring, and I'd hook him a little bit, and I'd let him go. You know, you don't want to cook a match or anything. You know, you don't want to screw everything up for 100,000 people. So we'd be there. We'd do, and even with Vern Gagne, you know, when we we were bleeding, both of us go to the hospital, bleeding, Minnesota. We both went. And, uh, you know, he, he got so scared that I was going to beat him for the belt on live TV in other words, they believed me. The promoters believed me. They were scared of me because when I told them something, they were scared, Steve. Hey, promoter come down to the dressing room. You know what I tell him? Hey, you have a license to be in here? He said, well, Dr. D, uh, yeah, I'm the promoter here. I'm Joe, Joe, whatever. I don't give a damn who you are. Get your ass out of the dressing room. If you don't have an athletic license, you get out of here. I'd run him out. The police come down in uniform with their kids, and they said, Hey, Doc, come over and give my boy all of that. I said, Go cuff yourself. Take your boy with you. Get out of here. If you don't have a damn, if you don't have an athletic license, get out. He said, Hey, we'll protect you out there. I don't need your protection. Get out of the dressing room. So, oh, my God, Brooklyn. Oh, I was going out of the gym, you know, out of one of the big gyms, and uh, I was walking across there, had my head thing on my tie on my head and all that going. And they were over there talking to, uh, I don't know, uh, Rods, Johnny Rods or different ones. And they said, oh, yeah, that's that Dr. D. That's that asshole. We're going to catch him out on the street one day. We're going to show him before I'm talking cops, right? Well, you know what? Those cops buy a ticket to see me get my ass whooped next time. I mean, they hated me.